everybody, it's Dr. McVary here, and we are with another update from our Foundations of Reading test prep video series. And we are still talking about how do we understand reading comprehension skills and strategies um, for both imaginative, literary, and you know, narrative texts, or informational texts as well. Um, as you know, I don't really s separate out the reading comprehension abilities between uh, informational texts and narrative texts. A lot of cultures don't even make that distinction. And when you really dig down between the four objectives, as we've talked about, those really focus a lot more on the different some like specific strategies and skills, the different ways. You know, it's more of a disciplinary text when you're reading narrative texts um, from that kind of lens, or you're just trying to get at the, the human condition when you're reading narrative texts versus reading for information with informational texts. Your purpose changes your the way you read. And that's, how do we know that? That's what we're here today, is to discuss the history of research into expert and novice readers. So what happened, you know, when we talked about those theoretical perspectives and how they've been unfolding over time, when we got to the late 70s, early 80s, uh, we were still in, you know, that mindset of information processing and that, and that cognitive science view. Um, yet we had started to get um, Vygotsky translated in 78 and then Palinscar and Brown did their study in 1984 on reciprocal teaching. And so a couple of people got together and started thinking about the research that was happening in cognitive science. You know, like a lot of it revolved around watching what experts versus novice chess players did or expert and novice problem solvers. Like, how do you figure out how people solve problems? Well, let's go watch people play chess. Um, and so a couple people, specifically Michael Presley and Peter Afferblack, got the idea of, wait a minute, what if we apply that to reading research? What if we get a bunch of experts and have them read, and then we watch a bunch of novices and want them read, and then try to decide what do expert readers do? And this had a major influence on the research in uh, reading comprehension strategy instruction. And so basically what they did was a series of what's called a verbal protocol analysis, or a think aloud. And that just means you ask um, the, the novice or the expert reader, hey, like to de define their decision points. Like if they highlighted a word, speak out loud, why did you do that? Um, if they, if they, they skimmed a page or they're tracking with a finger, say it out loud, why did you do that? That's a, that's a research technique called verbal protocol analysis. And what this boiled down to was a set of taxonomies of what good readers could do. Um, and this research continued, um, and, and Presley and Alphabet, to be honest, were building off of other taxonomies of, of reading strategies. But this really started to influence um, the idea of before, during, and after reading in our classroom. So what is, it, what is it that expert readers do? Well, we know that they approach reading as a before, during, and after activity. Like, when they're before the reading, they set a purpose. They don't just sit down to read. You know, they know what they're reading for. Uh, an expert reader will then preview the text with that, with that purpose in mind. And that helps them predict what the text will say. So they'll use things like um, text structure or the abstract. And they try to predict what the text is going to say before they even read it. All right, now during reading, what's an expert reader do? Well, they'll skim based on the purpose. Rarely do you see an expert reader read every single word um, with informational text. But then like, when they do hit like a relevant part, <laughs> laser eyes, and they reread, and they reread, and they reread, till they really truly understand it. What else? Take notes, copious notes, lots of notes. It might be annotated in margins. It might be on a, on a PDF. It might be in a notebook. But expert readers, we know that they take notes, and the details that they put in these notes, or the details that they highlight during their think labs, they're always related to the goal, to that original purpose that they set before reading. Because they use those details and those notes to then make inferences about what the reading says, if there aren't explicit details. And finally, they, during reading, they also summarize the text. Now, after reading, expert readers, uh, Presley and Alphabet found, reread, they summarize, they reflect, they combine the information with other texts or information that they knew, they, they knew, or they thought about future uses. Like sometimes an expert reader would come across something and be like, hey, this doesn't fit this puzzle here, but I'm going to squirrel it away for this puzzle over there. So we know what expert readers do with strategy instruction. And how did that translate in the classroom? Well, we're like, wait a minute. Let's start teaching the, the, the students to be expert readers. One of the best things that I think came out of this was the idea of just using the language of 
what do good readers do? You are an expert reader. Like trying to, trying to reinforce that culture of good reading and that every student in your classroom is a scholar who has access to this toolkit and can do these things before, during, and after reading. Um, the other thing you need to do is model, model, model. Before, during, and after reading, model these comprehension strategy instructions that you're teaching. Model what an expert reader does before, during, and after reading. Right? What else? You, well, think about now, use that BDA to plan your reading instruction. Think about how I assign you readings. I always say, I don't just say read chapter 13. It will say, read chapter 13 and look for examples of strategy instruction. You know, as a reading teacher, I always provide you a purpose for your, your reading. Then, during reading, I will, you know, even provide you like maybe a graphic organizer on the eight reading comprehensive strategies I want you looking on and want you to put in detail. So I'll give you a graphic organizer during reading that will help you scaffold the way that you find main ideas, the way that you take notes, and the way that you relate details to your goals and what you already know. And then after reading, I'll have some kind of, you know, assessment to really reinforce that goal that I set for you. So as a reading teacher, we can use the research around expert readers to really think about our instructional design from a before, during, and after reading perspective. And remember, model, model, model. Bye, all.